Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sure Creek TV. I'm Chris Franzen, and we're here to discuss the extreme countertop mixing procedures. I get asked in class a lot of questions about what makes the extreme countertop different than other countertop materials out there. Uh, the basic answer is the ease of use. It's a non-polymer modified cementious blend, extremely high fiber content, high PSI, you're achieving about 11,000 PSI after 28 days. Uh, in 24 hours, your PSI is that around 6,400. Uh, it cures out in about four hours. Um, you can take it out of the mold in about four hours, depending on the size of the piece. Uh, the fiber content is so high that it does not require any steel in the, when you're forming your countertops. So from that aspect, it cuts down on the work time, uh, the tying in of the steel, cuts out on the, uh, the labor that's required, and typically in most applications you can form and pour a kitchen all in one day, being able to demold later that afternoon or even in the morning to begin your tooling. So now we're going to go into what comprises the extreme countertop system. Okay. Alright, so what do you get when you order the extreme countertop? Basically you're going to get a 50 pound bag of dry goods. Um, this is, has all the fiber in it, everything in there that you need, it's a white cement based countertop mix. Uh, the reason we use a white base countertop mix is you can get more brilliant colors. Uh, you're not dulled down by a gray mix. If you need it to be a gray mix, you can add a tablespoon of, a tablespoon of black concentrate. Uh, you're going to get either a five gallon bucket of modifier or a one gallon bucket of modifier. This all depends on the amount of countertop mix that you've ordered. If you've ordered five bags, obviously we're going to send you a five gallon bucket and you get a free bucket at the end of the day. Uh, it is extremely, extremely important that you mix up the modifier. Uh, on the bottom, there's a, a sediment, a white sediment. You mix this up before you pour it, before you get ready to mix uh, your countertop, extreme countertop mix. Now, all these contents fit into a five gallon bucket, okay, for mixing purposes. So what you'll do is you'll shake your modifier in this case, or you'll spin it up with a drill in this case. You'll add one gallon of modifier per bag. And you put that into the five gallon bucket. You add a color pack depending on what color you want to go with. In this case, we have almond. <clears throat> why are color pack, why do we use color packs? The reason we use the color pack is because from bag to bag to bag on a pour, it gives you a constant color. For, uh, so you don't end up with mottled or blotchy spots on your countertop. Uh, it's one color pack per bag to achieve a color that's found on our color chart. So the first step is you have a clean, empty five gallon bucket. You put a gallon of modifier in, you add your color pack, and then you spin up the bucket, you drill it, you, you mix up the, the liquid portion of the mix. Uh, this will break down the color that's found in, uh, in your bucket there and let it, to dis let it disperse better in your countertop dry goods. So you add two thirds of the bag into the bucket and go ahead and drill that up. After you have your modifier and your color in there, you add two thirds of the bag, spin it up real good so you have consistency that's not lumpy. Everything should flow. It should take about a minute, a minute and a half, maybe even two minutes in some cases. Once you get to that consistency, it's a good idea to scrape down the sides of your bucket with a margin trowel, get anything, any dry goods off the sides that may be clumped on the sides of the bucket, and add the remaining bag, the remaining third of the bag, and continue to spin this up. Now, depending on how you want your countertop mix to be, whether you want it stiffer or looser or what type of application you're using, will determine whether you add water to the mix or not. Um, per, myself, I like it to be self-consolidating, more self-leveling. Um, it helps reduce pinholes if you do add about two cups of water, maybe a cup and a half. Uh, it'll be the consistency of a loose milkshake. Uh, this, will eat, this will make pouring a, a, a slab much easier. Uh, it'll relieve the, the surface of pinholes. Um, you'll have less pinholes throughout the mix. You'll have a denser piece of concrete. And uh, it just makes the, the use uh, much easier. So what we'll do now is we'll take these bags outside and we're going to mix them up and, and show you what kind of consistency we're looking for in each of the steps that we've discussed so far. All right, here we are, we're getting ready to mix the extreme countertop mix. One thing I'd like for you to pay attention to is the type of mixing blade that you're going to use. This is a helical mixer. It's got a spiral type shaft and blade on it and it prevents the fiber from getting stuck on the blade. Make mixing a lot easier. Remember, we gotta shake our modifier, get all the stuff off the bottom.
This will help our color to dissolve. And then we add about two thirds of the bag mix, the dry goods. Mix that up thoroughly. And I'm looking for a looser consistency so we can add up to two cups of water. So I'm going to put in about half of that to start with right now. And then add the remaining bag mix. Right down the sides. Now this consistency is very runny very loose self-leveling. If you'd like it looser at this point you can add a little bit more water if you want to. But keep, take note of how much water that you add so you make it consistent from batch to batch. This started at 20 ounces. I added 8 ounces of water and this is the consistency that we came up with. A very loose, flowing, self-consolidating mix and we're ready to pour.